Shalom Israel. My name is Officer Kayad, one out of ISUPK Jamaica. ISUPK started One West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. ISUPK is run by Commanding General Yahana, the one man with the rank and the authority to lead Israel at this time. I say, Ya Awa Bashami Awa Shai Brakatam to my brothers. Ya Awa Shamar Ailatan Bashami Awa Shai to my sisters. All right, so we're going to talk about the William Nib, you know what I mean? High school student who's been barred, you know what I mean, from attending face to face classes because he has, you know what I mean, long ear or, you know what I mean, a lot of ear upon him head. You understand? Being told by the principal that if he don't want to trim it or rasta dread it, that he can't attend face to face classes, you know what I mean, which we know is an injustice. We're going to jump in at the article. See? And the article said, School bar plated ear boy. Zin. Principal insists student must cut it or lock it. Right? Principal of the William Nib Memorial High School, Linvern Wright, is standing by his decision to bar a male student with plated ear from attending face to face school. The boy's mother, Kadisha James, has asserted that he is a Rastafarian and accused, uh, and accused the school of discrimination. All right, we can clearly see that that is not a Rastafarian ear style, but we surmise that the, the, the mother only said that because that those were the only options left on the table. If you don't say your child is a Rastafarian, your child can't keep him here. You understand that was the only option on the table. Continue reading. Wright was told, Slakia, Wright has told her to cut it or lock it. So he's now telling her, well, this young man have two options. Either him trim off the whole I'm here or him rasta dread it. Because he used the word lock, but we know that what this young man is, you know what I mean? That picture that you see of the young man on the screen, that is what the Bible refer to as locks. That is locks. Samson had seven of that. And his head, Zane, are seven key and rows, are can rows, but it was always braided. Zane, but they are saying he need to dreadlock his ear. You know what I mean? To show you that that is the only things that they accept. Them don't accept you grooming your ear in, you know what I mean, in the natural way that you know how to groom your ear. It's either you wear it unsanitary or you cut it. Continue reading. Right? So him tell, you, him tell the woman, say, to cut it or lock it. Continue reading. But she said that those options are unpalatable. You know what I mean? Which is her right. You know what I mean? And the young man's right to not want to lock or rasta dread lock him ear or cut it. The boy Ajani, who is 15, has been attending the Trelawney based institution since 2018. After being successful in his grade six achievement tests, he then exit exams for primary school. The previous principal said, boys who have ear should wear head covering, which he did, James said. She said that after Wright took over in 2020, he inquired of her why her son was wearing head covering. You know what I mean? I told him religious reason. But the principal told us he was not convinced that we are of Rastafarian faith because we don't lock our ear. I replied by saying, you don't have to dread to be a Rasta, James said. You know what I mean? So this is a star article. You can go over to the star and, you know what I mean, read the full article. But for time's sake, we're going to jump over to where this all started and why these institutions force our people to, you know what I mean, cut our ear or lock our ear, even when we, you know what I mean, we, we groom our ear in a way that is not unsanitary, you know what I mean, and is not, you know what I mean, messy. It don't look, you know what I mean, awful. It just look neat. Them still want to cut it, you understand, or lock it. You understand? So this is over at Wikipedia, you know what I mean? And it says, ear during slavery and a historical view of Afro texture ear, right? Pay close attention to this. Zane, I'm going to show you why them say cut it 
or why them say lock it, right? Because North America's indigenous population was being decimated by European colonists, extreme labor conditions, insufficient diet, violence, and disease, British European began forcibly transported so-called Africans because we know that we are not Africans, we are Israelites. It was the Africans who sold us to the, the British, right? To British North America in the early 1600s, right? So meanwhile, they were genociding the North American Indians, the Arawaks and the Tainos. They wanted labor, so them start them same for the rest, the other tribes, which are black people. You know what I mean? Are the so-called black people, which are also Israelites. You know what I mean? The other tribes of Israel, right? We break that down in subsequent videos and classes, which we implore you to just subscribe. We show you the proof of that and everything, all right? Before transporting them, captors and traders shaved the heads of all so-called African adults and children taken captive. So they used to shave with head. That is where these institutions get it from. All these institutions that you see in Jamaica that are Christian institutions, that is the reason why they force you to trim because the oppressor who gave you these institutions used to shave your head during slavery. You understand? Continue reading. The claims, the claimed purpose for this action was to prepare for the unsanitary condition of the slave ship. So their excuse was that, well, it is unsanitary in the slave ship. So this is why we cut their ear, which is a lie, which it I go tell you, right? Because of the culture and spiritual importance of ear for Africans, so-called Africans, the practice of having their heads and voluntarily shaved, and voluntarily shaved before being sold as enslaved people was in itself a dehumanizing act, right? So we found this to be very embarrassing. Somebody cutting our ear because our culture, you know what I mean? Our culture made us cherish our ear, you know what I mean? In a groom and, you know what I mean? And a beautiful fashion, you know what I mean? We took, we took good care of our ear, you know what I mean? As you see the young man ear look, so is how we used to treat our ear with care. And so is how we used to cherish our ear, you understand? Continue reading though. The shave head was the first step the Europeans took to erase the slaves' culture. Let me read that again. The shave head was the first step the European took to erase the slaves' culture and alter the relationship between the so-called Africans and his or her ear. So the purpose of them cutting our ear, the real purpose of them cutting our ear was to, you know what I mean, to take away our culture and to separate us from the love of our ear, which you see it evident today. Our people don't love them ear. You know what I mean? Most of our people, you know what I mean, trim them ear in a barber shop. At least, well, we know that the workplace and the schools require us to. And our sisters, you know what I mean, them, them, them not have them natural ear anymore. Them wear weave and wigs. You know what I mean? This is because we no longer cherish our ear as we did. You understand? And it continued to say their language was taken away and they were unable to identify with other tribes, Slakia, with others from their tribe. So them divide us by doing this. You understand? Which we know, as I say, we are not Africans. It was the Africans that sold us into slavery. As I say, watch our classes. We explain that perfectly to you. You know what I mean? All right, continue reading. Once their ear began to grow back, in other words, once they bring us over here into captivity to work on the cane fields, you know what I mean, to work in the cotton fields, we ear start grow back, right? Many enslaved people did not have the time, listen again, many enslaved people did not have the time or the tools to properly maintain their ear. You understand? So guess what happened? And it became tangled and matted as a result. That is where you get our ears start becoming like where you see the rasta them are wear now. Like where you see some of the bubble them and the bingy dread them wear. You know what I mean? Which 
we only used to wear that because we we never have the ability to take good care of our ear as before as before we used to comb our ear keep it neat shiny and nice we don't have to make it get entangled and we sure damn hell wouldn't have cut our ear because we loved our ear you understand but now we have a culture now in rastafariism see we say Wear your ear like this. It is natural. When the only reason why we our ear ever look like that is because we wasn't able to groom it. Continue reading. Enslaved people typically worked every day of the week, living in poor conditions and faced the risk of head lice and a ringworm. So remember back in the days, them used to tease the Rastafarians, them, say them ear of lice, you know what I mean? That's because them never did a take care of them ear. That, because, that is because what they were wearing was unsanitary. And we never used to do that willingly. You know what I mean? So the reason why this school now is telling this young man that here, here where you have two options. You have to trim it, which is Christianity. You know what I mean? Or you have to dreadlock it, which is Rastafariism. See him? is because both of them is an embarrassment to our people. You know what I mean? What the young man had was a good head of ear, well groomed, and it make him look like royalty. But they rather him cut it or make it look like a mess. You understand? And that is where it come from. But guess what? Remember, you know, we never used to make our ear get tangled or matted willingly, you know. So when did we start mat our ear and tangle it as you see the Rastafari them do? This was when Rastafariism and the worship of Selassie came into play. You know what I mean? And them fuse it with the East Indian culture, you know what I mean, of wearing them ear in dreads. You know what I mean? And we're going we are going to show you how the East Indians them used to wear them ear. And it looked exactly how, you know what I mean, these Rastafari wear them ear. You understand? But the East Indians used to wear them ear like this, not grooming it, just let it grow. This is their culture, right? And they used to worship their God by doing this called Shiva. They do this in the worship of their God, Shiva. You know what I mean? Not Selassie, no. Shiva. You understand? But Rasta because they want to, you know what I mean? They wanted a substitution for Christianity because we as Christianity is a lie. So they attach themselves with East Indian culture and the worship of a heathen in the name of Selassie. Zane, and started to make this a custom of wearing our ear like this. When previously this was us not being able to groom our ear properly. You know what I mean? So that is, you know what I mean? That is the history of our ear being either trimmed or being in this dreadlocks format. You know what I mean? Because it is an embarrassment to our people. It is an embarrassment, and these schools are not satisfied unless they are embarrassed on, embarrassing our children. You know what I mean? Unless them can take away the thing that make you beautiful from you. You see? They will not be happy. The options are trim it or dreadlock it. You understand? So in essence, getting you to hate your ear, your natural ear groom, to eat, seeing it groom and nice. And it reached a point right now where our sisters... You know what I mean? They have no hair and not even able to grow hair. You understand? Because, all right, because our sisters don't have the time, you know what I mean? Because of such, you know what I mean, living conditions that we live in today, see? which is this similar to us being in slavery. Our sisters don't even have time, you know what I mean? And because they lost the love for their ear a long time ago, see? what them do? Them cream it because them say, boy, it's easier for maintain. But the cream eventually, you know what I mean, um, destroy them ear and them eventually lose them ear. So now them have to wear wigs and them have to wear weaves. You understand? This is all, you know what I mean, because of 
what these institutions and what Christianity and Rastafariism and all these other entities that work against our people have caused. You know what I mean? That's why we implore our people, come back to the last statutes and commandments of the Most High. You know what I mean? As the children of Israel, come back to your covenant with the Most High. You will see how beautiful of a people you are. You know what I mean? Come out of these idolatrous religions that teach you how to eat your ear. You know what I mean? Which gives you this, these institutions that tell you that you have to destroy your ear or you can't come in. You can't come to face-to-face -to -face classes. You know what I mean? Separate yourself. You know what I mean? Mentally, spiritually. You know what I mean? And come to the ISUP and the commanding general, your honor. Let me teach you your culture back and you'll see how beautiful your culture is. I mean, we are the children of the most, you know. It is evident. It is so evident. You know what I mean? We have the greatest culture upon the face of the earth. We make others look great. If it wasn't for us, Christianity would be like, you know what I mean, what you're seeing at the Catholic Church. Look so, you know what I mean, sad and depressing. You know what I mean? But because we worship in dear idolatry, we make it look good when it was never desirable by anyone. You know what I mean? We go into Rastafariism and we sing songs that we make it so glorious. We, we, you know what I mean? We make others look good, but we have a better culture than any one of them. So it's time for we make our culture look good. All right. So we're going to jump into some scripture to show you, you know what I mean, that our people, we are a culture of, you know what I mean, having enough ear upon our head and we took pride in that. You understand? We know about Samson and his seven locks, you know what I mean, which is not dreads. Samson locks were braids. You understand? So I'll jump into some scripture as usual just to show you, you know what I mean? Because this Bible is our culture. You understand? This is the book of 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 25 to 26. And this is what it says. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. So Absalom was David's son, you know what I mean? Who eventually rose up against David and tried to, you know what I mean? take over the nation of Israel. But they said that he had much, meaning he was a handsome young man, right? Continue reading. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head. Why it said crown of his head? Because his ear was beautiful. Remember, this was a black man, you know? You know what I mean? Which we bring out in subsequent classes that, you know what I mean? The Israelites are black people according to the Bible. You know what I mean? In the Bible, we prove that. You understand? So the ear, his woolly ear that he had was, you know what I mean, was considered beautiful to the way him groom it and the way, you know what I mean, him deal with it. Continue reading. There was no blemish in him. You know what I mean? Meaning the scripture make you know, say, this man never have no fault. A black man in it, I tell you, say, this black man have no fault. Continue reading. Verse 26. And when he pulled his ear, meaning... When him groom him ear. So his ear grew fast. Which it about make you know. See? And when he pulled his ear. For it was at every year end that he pulled it. Meaning every year's end. Him have to pull him ear. Because his ear grew too fast. Him afro was so damn big. You know what I mean? That him have to cut it down to a level. Or it have to grow to control. You understand? Continue reading. Because the ear was heavy and him, therefore, he pulled it. So, him ear was heavy. Him could even manage it. And we can attest to that sometimes when our, we have a lot of ear upon our head or it make our ear, head kind of heavy, right? Continue reading. He, it, he weighed the ear of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. So, the ear upon him head weighed 200 shekels. I will leave I hear that. You understand? But this was, and this man never trim off him head. He never, he never go and dread like it. You know what I mean? He wore braids. You know what I mean? Which is our customs to wear, to wear braids. You understand? Let me jump to the book of Judges chapter 16 and 18 to, to 19. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his art, she sent, Selakia, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines. We know Delilah was, you know what I mean, the Eden woman who Samson, you know what I mean, took for his wife, right? Continue reading. Saying, 
come up this once for he has shewed me all his art. Then the Lord of the Philistine came up unto her and brought money in their hand. So she betrayed Samson basically, right? Verse 19, and she made him sleep upon her knee and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. So this man, this Philistine man came and shaved off the head, the, the ear are the seven locks of a Samson head, which we explained here before that these locks are not dreads because when have you seen a Rasta with seven dreads? You have never seen a Rasta with seven dreads. You might see him with six, you know what I mean? Six big clump a year and some little fine one and some little medium sized one. And then, you know what I mean? It's never consistent. But Samson really just had seven cane rows or seven of what you see the young man. Let me show you him again. You know what I mean? Because this is the way you can make it as specific as possible is when your ear actually look like this. When you're actually grooming it. You understand? Either you have braids or you have something like this, which is braids as well. You understand? So Samson had seven of them and she cut it off. You understand? So, yeah, man, we just assure you, say, our people, you know what I mean? We need to cherish our ear and don't let these wicked institutions that are founded upon slavery and the enslavement of our people and the dehumanization of our people tell you that you can't grow your ear. And with that, like this video, you know what I mean? Share, subscribe to this channel and leave your comments. You understand? And remember to pay your tithes. You understand? Come on, in general, your honor actually cares about black, Hispanic and native Indian. You understand? Our native people. You understand? Pay your tithes. Stop giving that Christian pastor your tithes money. He's no profit at the most time. And with that, shallow.